Stephen Knezevec is a UNL Integrated Weed Management Professor and Head Fleming Researcher at Haskell Ag Lab at Concord. Knezevec and Dr. George Gogos, his colleague in the UNL Mechanical Engineering Department, and several other graduate students and researchers recently exhibited their research and demonstrated flaming operations in the field at a flaming workshop at Haskell Ag Lab. They used four row and six row flaming equipment developed by the University of Nebraska. In their research, they found that broadleaf weeds are easier to kill with flaming than grass weeds, and grass crops like corn and sorghum are more tolerant to flaming than broadleaf crops like soybeans. At the workshop, Knezevec explained the importance of hitting weeds with flaming while they are still small. He also discussed with farmers the stages of growth when crops like soybeans are most tolerant to flaming treatments. A tall, pretty tall weed. You can see, you can see your lamp scorter. Look at this, oh, lamp scorter, a velvet leaf. Look at the size of that velvet leaf there. You know, that's killed, and this will be killed too. In the past six years, the University of Nebraska research in weed flaming has gone through the roof. Using concentrated flame heated to above 2,000 degrees to damage or kill weeds, particularly for organic row crops, has revealed that, is, that it can work effectively without severe economic damage to the crops. This research, funded in part by the Propane Education and Research Council, has proven that weed flaming is truly an emerging technology that organic and conventional producers might consider. Flaming is not a new idea, According to one report, cotton and corn farmers in the South came up with the concept using kerosene burners in the late 1930s, before effective commercial herbicides were even available. It was tested on sugarcane, cotton, corn, and soybeans by Louisiana State University researchers in the 1940s. First trifoliate, second trifoliate, third trifoliate, and fourth trifoliate. If this summer wasn't as hot, these beans at the fourth trifoliate stage would have been probably another almost a foot taller. But just because of the too much heat, uh, even though this has moisture, if you dig through here, there's your moisture right there. You got moisture in the ground because this is all irrigated. So basically these beans would have been taller and you would end up uh, maybe just nipping the bottom. What I mean by taller, this internodal space between the leaves will be longer. You know, because the plant is suppressed uh, when it's hot and everything, it doesn't grow, doesn't grow, and you know, just.